Oh, hey, hi. Yeah, we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> hey, welcome back for episode three. Thanks for joining us again. So today we're getting this crankshaft polished up. This is our, this is our goal. And so what I've done is I've just I've cleaned each of the journals, uh, each of these journals with uh, brake clean with a paper towel. And then I'm going to use this Brasso uh, metal polish on the sand uh, on the sandpaper, which I'm using 800 grit, and uh, just to, as a lubricant. And I put some on each journal as well. And then I'll just do three or four wraps with some shoestring uh, around around the sandpaper after I just wrap the sandpaper around like this. And I'll do about three three to four wraps, whatever will fit. Um, with the with the shoestring and then I'll just pull it back and forth like this to polish it up. You want to get about like two rotations each direction um, so you need long shoestring. So that's what we got going today. Okay so here we go. It does kind of bind up some so that's Challenging. Okay, we'll do our best. Seven, eight, nine, thirty. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, this one I have polished. It's not com the polish isn't completely cleaned off of this one yet. This one has not been polished at all. And then this one is the one that I just did, so I'm going to wipe this one clear. Just going to fold this like this. Kind of wipe it around. The big thing is making sure you don't have any, any marks or lines in the crankshaft that you can feel. <clears throat> and like some of these rod journals that I have, there's, you know, some pretty good marks that you can see but you can't really feel anything so you know we're just we're just polishing it out if there's much that you can feel then you have to take it to a machine shop and get it uh, turned and then you'd run an undersized bearing so we're just trying to just clean it up refresh it before it goes in new bearings so it's looking pretty good so we'll do that to all the rest of them Okay, I want to give you another look here. So we've gotten all the raw journals uh, polished here. So now I'm just starting on the, or not raw journal, sorry. Got all the crank journals done. I'm just starting on the on the first uh, raw journal here. So here's a comparison. If you can see kind of the marks. Um, Try and get this to focus right there and then kind of compare it with what it looks like here after after polish so it just very very kind of fine lines in it left which is which is fine so we've got like this one has a pretty pretty good mark um, in it on that one and then this one Let's see, this one here has kind of a pretty good mark. So we'll see how well those come out um, after, after doing some polishing on them. So, all right, we're gonna keep going. So it's all polished up now. I'm gonna run it into the machine shop and have them wash it up for me. Normally I would have taken this in and had them polish it and clean it when I took the engine block in. But since I was going to polish it myself, then I waited and I'll have them wash it up uh, now that I'm done polishing. And then it'll also clean off all this kind of left leftover carbon stuff you can see kind of built up on here from just, you know, 23 years of churning through oil, old oil. So anyway, We'll zip it into town and uh, probably get it back in a couple days. Okay, it's camshaft time. So 
I've got this comp cams aftermarket uh, upgrade. It's their extreme four x four camshaft and uh, it's part number 163-201-5 if you're interested. It doesn't have any reviews on it right now um, on their website. So we're gonna test it out and see how we like it. Okay, so for installation, I'm gonna use this um, engine assembly lube for the cam journals here. And since I only have a little bit of this um, assembly grease, then I'm gonna save this and use it for the, the cam lobes. This was recommended by the uh, machinist because um, this grease will hang on uh, to the cam lobes longer. So if you, you know, put it together and then it takes you a little while, like it will for me, before it's running, because my project's been taking a long time, then I'm, I'm gonna use this grease on here. They do send, um, you know, lubricant with these, but he had just mentioned that a lot of times they're thinner and they'll, they'll drip off before you get a chance to actually start it. So, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm just getting all the bearings good and smeared with assembly lube here. Okay, I've got assembly lube on these journals as well. So now we'll try and put it in, doing our best to not ding up our brand new bearings, which is the challenge when doing a cam installation. So just take your time. Okay, almost. All right. There we go. All in. Okay, and now I can grab the end of it and spin it by hand, which is what you want. Nice and smooth. And now to keep the camshaft from falling out, then we will bolt on our camshaft retainer. So I'm gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on the bolts, just like this, or a lot. This will keep the camshaft from falling out, which we definitely don't want. And then I don't know the grade of these bolts. So I went off of the grade five bolt chart since these are not uh, load bearing. And so 17 foot pounds is the torque for a 5 sixteenths grade five bolt. So that's what we're gonna go off of. Double check, okay, good to go. So I wanna to touch on a couple camshaft related things that are really, really crucial to uh, having a successful engine rebuild. So when you have a flat tappet cam, which means your lifters look like this on the bottom instead of having a roller, then it's super important uh, if you're if you're checking your cam or you're putting a new cam in that you make sure that you have um, this taper uh, which is part of the machining process of the, of the camshaft but if if the top of this lobe um, isn't tapered on one end and I believe that they generally alternate I think I think that's pretty consistent across um, all flat type of engines it's like 
is they'll taper or they'll alternate which side is, is the high side. So like on this one, the high side's over here. The next one, it'll be on the other side and they'll go back and forth. Um, but the reason that that's important is that if that gets machined and it's flat, it's it doesn't have a high side, then it just comes across here and wipes on the bottom of your um, of your lifter, and uh, it'll it'll wipe out your lifter in like a couple minutes of running your engine. But the reason that they have it tapered is so that as that lobe comes by and pushes pushes up on the lifter, it actually rotates the lifter um, with that with that high high side as it as it pushes up and down then it then it spins the lifter and that's what keeps these from from wearing the other part is and you can check your lifters like this is your lifters actually have um, a very slight kind of cup to them when they're machined and so if you take two let me line this up here and you can rock them back and forth like this it's because that's that's not machined, you know, flat. They have a they have a curve to them, and that also is is the other kind of half of these being able to you know go up and down and sorry rotate correctly. So you want to make sure you check those two things because um, you know in a couple minutes of running, if those uh, aren't machined right, it'll it'll take out your engine rebuild. Well, I got the crankshaft back from the machine shop and it looks really nice. You can look in close and see all the journals. Now yeah, look really good. You'll see a little bit of, of surface rust just from being washed uh, with water and then it'll just kind of get a little bit of a rusty look there but that's Nothing to worry about. So it's ready to uh, get set in the block and uh, get checked with plastic gauge for proper bearing clearance. So that'll be part of the next episode. So be sure to tune in. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again for another episode of Garage of Projects. I wanted to show you up closer uh, some of the products that I'm using on this because I didn't show them very well earlier, but here's the engine assembly lube that I like to use. And then this is the grease that I talked about earlier. I didn't show it very well, but it's a driven brand um, engine assembly grease. So anyway, um, if you're interested in the specs of the camshaft that I'm that I'm putting in, I'm gonna have a post on Instagram with the, a picture of the spec sheet and then I'll have a picture of the factory specs uh, so you can see the difference between the two. And then I'll probably throw a picture of these up as well uh, if you're interested in that. So anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you have a great Christmas and we'll see you next time.